Hey everyone, welcome back to the Crypto Coffee Corner. I'm Stephanie Starr and today is April 16th of 2021. And yes, I know it has been well over a month since my last video. Uh, I guess my software was having some issues uh, distorting my audio. I had to uninstall it and reinstall it. It was crazy. Anyway, uh, we have had an amazing week in the XRP community. We've had an amazing week in the XDC community. I am now a proud owner of a nice bag of XDC. Super excited to see where this goes. Um, I also diversified into HBAR. Um, I also uh, diversified a little bit more into ADA, which is Cardano. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just been an amazing week. Uh, last week we had some victories in regards to the XRP SEC, uh, lawsuit, or I should say ripple, the ripple versus SEC lawsuit. We had a couple of victories. We'll go into that a little bit later. And, uh, the bull run has been so nice. You know, life just hits differently <laughs> when your coins are on the rise. It really puts a pep in your step. Um, it gives you hope for a better future, a brighter tomorrow. And, you know, when with 2020 was so difficult, not only with the pandemic, but just, you know, globally economies, people being, you know, shut down and, and quarantined. It's, 2020 was a rough year. So coming out into 2021, if you're invested into cryptocurrencies, you're having a fabulous year so far. Uh, and if you're not invested in the cryptocurrencies, I suggest that you do your research. Don't count on me. Don't count on other YouTube content creators. Do your research. Come up with your own conclusions. And if you think that this is where we're going in the future, then take a dive um, and hold on tight. So uh, we're going to go ahead and jump into some interesting things that have been going on in the last week. So grab yourself a cup of joe. I'm about to tell you what I know. All right, everyone. So let's go ahead and look at the coin market cap. So uh, it looks like Bitcoin is down a little bit today at $60,000 per coin. Still blows my mind to see it that high. Uh, it's and, and look at Ethereum or, you know, sitting at $2,300. Still up 16% in seven days. So that's pretty good. But look at my boy XRP. Look at XRP. He is up 54% in seven days. Yeah, there's a little bit of a retracement going on. That's okay, though, guys. This is when you buy the dip. Not financial advice, just my suggestion. <laughs> you buy the dips and you accumulate. That's, you know, I've been doing this for over a year and it has turned out quite well for me. But <laughs> the real kicker is look at Dogecoin. Oh my God, you guys, Dogecoin is up 221% in 24 hours. It is up um, 50. 540% in seven days. Dogecoin was created as a joke. And I believe the developers actually abandoned the project a few years ago. So to see that it's up this much blows my mind. And maybe it has something to do with Flare, um, you know, pay, taking it in and, and putting it into its network and creating an F class with it. I'm not sure. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at some other favorites of ours. There's Cardano and it's a little, it's down a little bit today, but it's up 14% in seven days. Uh, let's look at Chainlink, $40. It's down by 2%, but it's up 25% in seven days. Look at Stellar. There's my boy Stellar, uh, XLM. They're up 20% in seven days. So we are seeing a little bit of retracement in the market. And that's fine because it can't always go up. It has to come down, take a breather before it can go up on the next leg, right? So it's all healthy, all healthy little pullbacks. All right. So the Crypto Poet posted this. And it is Navadi uh, taps ODL to improve Australian remittance payments to Southeast Asia. And we all know that Southeast Asia, well, Asia in general, is a big component with RippleNet, right? So 
uh, with SBI and, and other financial institutes over in that section of the world, they're already using RippleNet. They're already using XRP. Um, systems are slowly being activated. And I believe that's why the price is going up. Uh, some people are speculating that it has to do with the SEC lawsuit. I don't believe so. You know, uh, XRP is a global digital asset. So this little United States SEC lawsuit has nothing to do with the price action. In my opinion, um, I think that, you know, all systems are go and, and that's what's creating it. So it says here live now, Novati expects to process several thousand transactions a month through RippleNet's on-demand liquidity uh, services. So I went to the Novati website <clears throat> and this is what it shows. It says, believe in the power of experience. Over 59 countries are active using Novati. Uh, $2.3 billion plus in value of transactions processed every year. And they do have 20 years of experience. So this is this is not a little company. This is a, a pretty big size company that is now connected um, with the Southeast Asia market. And they're going to be using that corridor, right? So very exciting stuff. Uh, over here, I wanted to show you guys what King Solomon had posted on Facebook, um, on Twitter last night, Central Bank of France is effing saying XRP could be the interfacing platform for the digital euro. Open your eyes. And then he circles down here. France's central bank, Bank de France, has openly discussed Ripple slash XRP as a possible platform for Europe's central digital currency. Well, of course they have. The Bank of England uh, is a Ripple partner. Uh, I'm sure the Bank of France is going to start looking into it um, and more than likely will join uh, as in a partnership. And the reason why I am saying that is because the BIS is a partner of Ripple and has been, I believe, since 2016, 2017. What is the BIS? Well, I talk about the BIS in almost every video I make for the newbies who are coming into the space and they don't know. The BIS is the Bank of International Settlements and they are the central bank of 60 central banks. They are at the top of the pyramid, guys. Uh, so, you know, for the BIS to be partnered with Ripple screams the 60 central banks that are under them will more than likely be connected to the Ripple net. Um, also, interesting fact, uh, BIS and our Federal Reserve have partnered back in October of 2020. Um, they have an innovation hub in New York City. Yes, they do. The Federal Reserve is now uh, testing uh, these new systems. They haven't come out and said RippleNet, but they have stated that they are testing new systems. Well, I wonder what that new system is, don't you? All right. And another reason why this is interesting is because last month Ripple came out and stated that uh, they are going to be making a private blockchain for building central bank digital currencies. The new CBDC private ledger is being developed with high throughput and interoperability as it mains priorities, said Ripple. Um, so, yeah, it's very interesting you know, Ripple has created this private ledger and it's supposedly very simple to create these CBDCs on. Uh, and I believe that that's what these central banks are going to be using. So let's go ahead and get into the Ripple Sec lawsuit that's been going on here. Um, so as we all know, <laughs> December, the Sec dropped a lawsuit. Um, Jay Clayton was the chairman, and the next day, Jay Clayton left. Uh, so now this new administration is coming in, and they are having to deal with this lawsuit. Thankfully, Gary Ginsler is um, the SEC chairman. He's been confirmed by the Senate as of, I think, Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, and will be starting his position here soon. Gensler has stated openly in a lecture that XRP is a currency. Uh, and from my understanding, if it is labeled a currency, there will be no capital gains tax, right? Uh, 
because it is a currency. So anyway, uh, so the SEC lawsuit had a uh, conference last week where the Ripple executives were wanting to not disclose eight years worth of their personal financial uh, statements. They've given over all financial statements that had anything to do with XRP transactions, but they were arguing the fact that it was an overreach to want all of their financial um, transactions and their information going back eight years. And I wholeheartedly agree. Um, if they have given the SEC their XRP transactions, then I think the SEC doesn't need anything else, really. Uh, so the judge did grant them that, stated that they do not have to um, turn over eight years worth of their personal financial statements. Uh, also, Ripple was granted access to SEC documents on Bitcoin, Ether in the ongoing XRP fight. This is amazing news because the SEC was fighting extremely hard to not release those documents. They had to go in front of the judge and they had to argue why uh, it was not important. And they just kept repeating that Bitcoin and Ether uh, are irrelevant to the XRP case. And that is not true. So thankfully, we've got a very intelligent judge and she saw through the BS and she told the SEC that they have to give over the documents. Uh, so that's really exciting. And maybe that had a little bit to do with the price increase. But um, OK, so let's see here. This says Ripple executives file to dismiss SEC lawsuit as XRP prices soar. Now, <clears throat> this is a little misleading if you're not aware what's going on. OK, so the SEC is suing Brad Garlinghouse, Chris Larson and Ripple as a company. Well, Brad and Chris, as the executives, are filing to dismiss the lawsuit against them. And then they can focus on just ripple the company. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how that unfolds. And I think they're going to get it, my own personal opinion. All right. And I also wanted to show you guys this. I don't know if y'all have seen this, but two or three nights ago, I saw this on my TV and I had to look it up on YouTube and I wanted to share it with you guys. OK, Charles Schwab is coming out with these fractionalized stocks. Right. And they call it uh, stock slices. And this is where we're headed. You guys, the stocks will be they call it fractionalized, but I look at it as tokenized. Right. Stocks, commodities, real estate, everything is going to be tokenized. And this was a very interesting commercial. So I'm going to let you guys watch. Introducing Schwab Stock Slices. For as little as $5, now anyone can own companies in the S&P 500, even if their shares cost more. At $5 a slice, you could own 10 companies for $50 instead of paying thousands. All commission free online. Schwab Stock Slices, an easy way to start investing or to give the gift of stock ownership. Schwab, own your tomorrow. I found this interesting, you guys, and I've always had this thought, and I'm going to share this with you and then wrap up this video, but I've always had this thought in the back of my mind that as we move forward uh, technologically, right, and either robots start taking over our positions and technology in itself starts to create, um, auto, you know, starts to automate positions. How are we as a people going to produce income? So you got to remember that these big companies, they understand that if we, the people do not have jobs to produce income for ourselves, that we can't buy their products and their companies will eventually fail, right? So as we move forward in the future and robots start to take over and different software start to eliminate positions, it is in my opinion wholeheartedly that these fractionalized stocks, these cryptos that you're seeing emerge, these are going to be ways for us to continue to have income for ourselves. So we will be buying these stock slices, okay? Uh, and, and that will create passive income for us. 
either on a monthly um, time frame or maybe quarterly. Um, and, and again, I'm not a financial expert, but I'm just thinking out loud here so that we are able to still produce income for ourselves and go buy their products uh, and keep the economy running, right? So, uh, yeah, I just wanted to share my thoughts with you guys on that. Uh, as a mom, I've been worried, you know, I've got a four-year-old and I've got a 13-year-old and I'm seeing how quickly the world is changing and the thought of not knowing how they're going to survive in this new world. Well, the powers to be and the elites, they're not dumb. They know that they need us to keep them afloat. So they're figuring out a way to be able to do that and look at this fractionalized stocks, make it more affordable and easier for everyday average people to buy into their companies. So when their companies do good, we get a piece of that pie. Uh, so yeah, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I appreciate your time and I look forward to speaking with you all next time. Have a great weekend, everybody.